How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. Bitcoin may be destroyed by BlackRock. Now, I know on the channel I've been talking about how positive it is that big institutions are coming in and how positive that is for the price action. But today we're looking at a counterpoint from someone that's been in the space a long time. They said that BlackRock could be actually destroying Bitcoin. And while I don't think that's really the case, I do think it's important to take a look at the other side of the story. Take a look at what people are saying that don't necessarily want big institutions in here. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this one. There's also a link down there to Margex. In case you wanna trade cryptocurrency, you can check that out. And I know we're talking about Bitcoin for the most part here today, but there are some altcoins that are absolutely racing. For example, Caspa, it's up 60% in the last 12 days, and you can go and trade that on Margex. We we're able to get them to actually add Caspa on here, so you can trade on leverage Caspa, which is pretty awesome. I actually uh, have used this to uh, trade Caspa in the past as well. So definitely check this out underneath the video. There's no KYC, you don't need a VPN, and you can get a deposit bonus up to 20% when you use that link. You can see, too, Bitcoin is flipping bearish on HG Algo, the indicator that we have listed underneath the video. You can see on the one hour, we had bullish momentum up until a couple hours ago, and it flipped bearish. Now, I'll talk more about this, what I think this could be or what we could ha have happen next. I'll talk more about that towards the end of the video, but let's just take a look at what institutions are doing right now. As you can see, institutions are still buying yesterday. Supposedly, we had about 6,800 net Bitcoin bought up by these institutions. Price is still going down. So obviously, someone is selling, most likely short-term holders, most likely smaller holders. That's what we've seen in the past. But this is net. This is net. Even with uh, GBTC selling, still institutions are swallowing up Bitcoin. And the reason that I think these last couple of days were a little bit smaller, we have seen GBTC actually sell more. We've seen them go up from 50 million sold to like 150 million to 200 million. So that does cause the net obviously to go down a bit. And that could just be due to Genesis now selling some of their GBTC because they got court approval. Now that's a short term headwind. I don't think it's really going to cause us issues long term. You can see too the acceleration. Since week three, we went from negative to positive to positive to an even bigger number. Like the week over week increase in Bitcoin bought is huge. It's what, what is that? An 80% increase from week five to week six. That's massive. If this was a stock, the stock price would be going up exponentially at this point. If this was like revenue or earnings or anything like that, this is significant. This is a significant increase in the amount of Bitcoin uh, bought by these ETFs. Now, some people don't think that this is a positive. BlackRock getting into the game, Fidelity getting into the game. Some people think that this will actually will actually destroy Bitcoin. And this is actually coming from someone, Arthur Hayes, who's been around crypto for a very long time. He's actually pretty well thought of. Uh, he's led up billion dollar companies. I think he uh, the main company he had was an exchange. You can see he co-founded derivatives, uh, crypto derivative pioneer BitMEX. He says, that if BlackRock, which is in the asset accumulation game, vacuums up all the Bitcoin, there will be no more Bitcoin transactions. And those who secure the Bitcoin network in return for fees and newly minted Bitcoin, known as miners, would be unable to afford the energy cost, it, uh, the energy it costs to secure the network. As a result, they would shut off their machines. Without the miners, the network dies and Bitcoin vanishes. Now that is pretty scary when you read that for the first time. But when you break down what's actually happening, what what he says could happen, it sounds worse than what actually is happening. So he's saying, yeah, if if BlackRock buys up a lot of Bitcoin, people aren't going to transact as much. The miners aren't going to get paid fees. And then they're not going to actually want to mine Bitcoin. They're not going to secure the network. But what you have to remember is Bitcoin can be split up into 100 million pieces called Satoshis. So if BlackRock goes and buys a million Bitcoin, let's say there are only a couple people transact on Bitcoin. It's not like they're going to be unable to uh, get a small enough increment if the price goes way up. Like you can take one 100 millionth of a Bitcoin and transact with it. 
Now, maybe the fees are higher. This is something that I think is actually more of an issue. What if BlackRock goes and buys Bitcoin, a lot of other countries buy Bitcoin, and they start doing transactions, and they're doing multi-million dollar transactions, and they're willing to pay high fees. Then the people that aren't willing to pay high fees or can't afford those high fees may be pushed further and further back in the queue. That is something I think would be more of an issue, but that's not what he's saying. He's saying basically no one's going to transact with Bitcoin. They're just going to hold it. They're just going to accumulate it and hold it. The other thing you have to remember, though, is that there are two parts to how the miners get paid. They get the actual uh, block reward, which is what we typically think of, the 900 Bitcoin a day that's mined. And then they also get fees. Now, if the fees aren't there, they still get the block reward. Now, 2140 is the time that the last Bitcoin will be mined. And then they'll have to get paid tips or fees to be able to uh, continue to transact on the network because there won't be any more block rewards. In the meantime, let's say let's say there are no fees and some miners aren't profitable anymore. They're just really inefficient, right? They're going to unplug their miners. But then the hash rate will go down, which means the miners that are mining will get paid more Bitcoin because there are less people vying for the same reward. So it's still going to be profitable for some miners, even if there are no fees. And that's the beautiful thing about Bitcoin mining is it's kind of like a self-cleaning oven. Like if there's just some miners that aren't efficient enough, they unplug, then the other miners get paid more. They become more profitable until the price goes up further. And then those un if those inefficient miners can plug back in and start making money. And then if the hash rate goes too high or if uh, there's some other issue, let's say we go through another halving and then the fee or the uh, rewards are cut in half, the inefficient miners have to unplug again until the price goes up. And this just continues. There's never going to be zero hash rate because there's always going to be a reward, at least until 2140. So there's never going to be no miners left. The other thing is, I wouldn't really worry about 2140. I think people are saying are reading this thinking that this is going to be like some short-term thing that uh, BlackRock's going to completely destroy Bitcoin now that they're getting into the game. But he's actually talking about over 100 years from now. I would be much more worried about other things in the short term. And even BlackRock coming in here, they're not going to be able to buy all that much Bitcoin. There's 1.3 million left on exchanges. Let's say they can get all that uh, and then they can double it or triple it. Let's say they get 4 million Bitcoin. Okay, there's still like another, even if you think that there are a lot of Bitcoin loss, there's still another 10 million Bitcoin plus that are out there. There's still going to be people transacting on Bitcoin, sending Bitcoin. Uh, there's still going to be newer people that come in and buy small amounts of Bitcoin and transact with it, send it over the Lightning Network, pay fees, all that kind of stuff. So I would not be too worried about this. I think the key really is that BlackRock's going to destroy uh, people's ability to get into Bitcoin early. Because if they come in and buy, let's say they buy 400,000 Bitcoin, 600,000 Bitcoin, let's say they buy as much as GBTC. Okay, they hold half a million Bitcoin, that's going to skyrocket the price. We haven't seen that kind of accumulation in a long time since GBTC. And there are many more institutions and individuals and people that are trying to buy Bitcoin right now. So that's going to skyrocket the price. So instead of buying around 20,000 in the bear market or 50,000 now, you're probably going to be buying at 100,000 plus, $200,000 plus. So that takes out a lot of the upside for individuals that get in late. So the key is not to get rid of your Bitcoin because BlackRock's in the game. The key is to get your Bitcoin before BlackRock really starts buying more. And they're already buying a lot. I mean, imagine this continues to happen. Imagine they keep on swallowing up 45,000 Bitcoin a week for the next couple months. That amount of buying pressure is going to skyrocket the price. And a lot of people are looking at this, looking at the short term, thinking, oh man, this looks really bearish. I, I've already had people reach out like, hey, should I wait to buy? Like, it looks like we're falling down. I've also seen a lot of comments saying, hey, I'm just going to buy back at 38,000. I'm going to fall. I'm going to buy back at 30,000. It's crazy, but people are saying that. Now, I think this is completely normal. Zoom out, zoom out, and you see we went from 42,000 all the way up to 52 in a very short time span. You zoom out even more. Let's see if I can even show this. Yeah, we just we just had massive moves after massive moves. 
and then we consolidated for a while and then massive move. This is what has been the story for the last year and a half. Like zoom out and you barely even notice this little drop, this little, little drop. So if you can't handle this volatility, you shouldn't be in the asset. But I'm not looking to get out at this time. Like I'm not bearish because we're seeing you know, some bearish momentum on the one hour or anything like that. Long term, I'm super bullish. I do think these indicators are useful though for trading. So you can see when the trend turns. But what I'm really looking for is actually a retest of, let's pull this up. I have it right here. That's a great thing about Margex too. It keeps all your lines. So that way you can go from one chart to the next and come back and all your lines are still there for trading. You can see we went up and saw some resistance right around 50,300. Now I'm watching this line about 50,400 because I'd love to open along right here because it's very likely that we could just hit back down around this 55 or 50,500, 50,400 mark and then bounce right back up. We often see this where prior resistance is flipped into support and with 50,000 being a big round number, I think a lot of people would start buying right around then and nothing's really changed. Like obviously there are some sellers right now, obviously because the price is going down, but the ETFs are still swallowing up as much Bitcoin as possible. So yeah, there's some people taking short-term profits, may, maybe because the CPI or PPI was bad, but that's the only reason I can see why anyone would be selling Bitcoin at this point. Maybe, I know some people think that we're gonna dip before the halving, but this is typically one of the best times to be buying Bitcoin ahead of the halving, sell 18 months later after the halving. So I'm not, I'm not selling right now. I'm looking at accumulating some more. I'm looking at going long, depending on the spot that we're uh, in. And if we zoom out to, let's say the one day, this $50,000 mark is great. But another thing that you have to look at is about 48,000. You can see this broader trend going all the way back to 2019. We hit some resistance, support, 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 resistance here, and then flipped resistance into, well, didn't even flip it into support yet. We just went way above it. So even if we come back down to that 48, $49,000 mark and then move up, that's still bullish. That's still bullish in my opinion. Plus that's about where we had some resistance in the past. So anywhere between 48,500 and where we are now, if we go down there, touch it and then come back up, super bullish, super, super bullish. And the buying pressure is still insane. So I would not be too discouraged. Don't worry about the short term too much because while some people think BlackRock is destroying Bitcoin, what's really happening is they are just swallowing up as much as they can get their hands on, which is great for the price and for anyone that's had Bitcoin, that owns Bitcoin now. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Definitely check out the links to Margex. If you want to know what I'm buying and selling, you can check out the link to my Patreon. There's also a link down there to HD Algo in case you want to see bullish and bearish momentum indicators, in case you want to know good times to dollar cost average in and out of the market taking the psychology out of trading and out of out of buying and holding as well. You can check out that link. We also have some tutorial videos on how to set it up, how to use it. You can get notifications to your phone when certain things happen, which can definitely help you as well. So you don't have to stare at the charts. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I will see you in the next video. Bye.